Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the map Forts of Eisen. On the left side we have the blue model player D3 against the green Rohan player Jesse. This is the patch 1.06. He will have two farm start into the Hobbit Mary and he's gonna immediately go for more peasants and splitting his starting peasants, one is gonna go through the middle and one is gonna go through the bot side. On the other side, we will have an Orc Pit start, obviously, into the Gollum. Gollum is a great choice early on against Rohan, but also against Gonzo, because you can outrun those peasants and deal a decent amount of damage to the peasants, especially to the peasants because they are much, much weaker than soldiers. And you are also faster, but weaker than a Hobbit. But, you know, if he keeps running away from you, you will be able to hit him multiple times because you are faster um, than the Hobbit Merry. Okay, so the goal from the model player D3 will obviously be to protect those lumber mills. Uh, Modo is not very strong early on. We had a fight here between peasants and orcs. Uh, peasants were able to win that fight. That's obviously because they are stronger than orcs. Because orcs, they are for free. You can recruit them without, you know, paying a penny. Hobbit was able to force the golem away. But golem was able to survive and he will be regenerating his health over time. Okay, so we have... One peasant hiding at the bottom left corner, but I think Gollum was already able to, you know, see them and he should be able to deal decent amount of damage, but he needs to be careful because he's already quite slow. But for some reason the peasants are not attacking, so Gollum is gonna be able to kill multiple peasants without losing his health. Um, we are gonna get some more peasants through the bottom side and his third peasant coming from the farm is gonna capture those settlements outside. This one here and this one here at the top right side. And we have also one peasant who was able to survive and now being used for scouting purposes. Um, what the Hobbit is doing, if you are wondering, is he's trying to kill the lumber mill workers. That's always something you have to do. Especially when you realize you won't be able to take down the mill. You should at least try to kill the lumber mill workers. I think this mill is going to be taken down anyway. Uh, Eye of Sauron is gonna buff the damage of these orcs and gonna give them also more combat experience. That's the reason why they will be leveling up quite fast. Look at the experience they are able to gain. This battalion should be hitting level 2. Yeah, he was losing the Lumber Mill, but kinda late. We have also Haradrims coming from the Haradrim Palace, and because the eye is still active, he can go for the creep and get the treasure, which is gonna be very, very important for the Mordor player. And now he has both his mills again under his control. He's gonna go for more Haradrims, potentially even some Soldiers of Rune later on. The Hobbit is still alive, by the way. And I think he will be trying to kill those Haradrims, because Haradrims, but also Runes, are very, very vulnerable against any heroes, um, including the Hobbit's Merry. On the bright side for the Mordor player, he was able to creep the work layer at the bottom left side. Now you can even move on and get this one at the bottom right side as well. Tainted land is being used. And that's what I meant before. Hobbit is just chasing down those Haradrims because he knows he can two-shot them even on the Tainted land. But I'm assuming this creep, at least the Lumber Mill, will be secured by the Mordor player. But I'm actually wondering who's gonna be able to steal the treasure. Because treasure, I would say... Is gonna be more important for the modder player right now and he was able to grab both parts of the treasure that's why his base is gonna be filled up very very soon and also the fact that he has now four lumber mills under his control is gonna give him the woods bonus that means every structure in his base will be costing 30 percent less a slaughterhouse for example which normally costs 350 will be now only costing 245. all right so Moro player was able to creep one, two, three work layers in total. This one is not done yet, but uh, Rohirrim they need to be very careful. I think a Moro player should be also trying to use the advantage of the fourth lumber mill now and fill up his base. And he has only one spot left, two spots left, because he was demolishing the Haraldrim Palace. All right, it looks like the Rohan player is gonna give up this creep at the bottom right side. Um, he changing his mind and gonna re-engage on these Haradrims, but this creep already secured by the model player and he's gonna use this Oryx to grab the treasure as well. That's a risky move from the Rohan player, but luckily he won't get punished for that. He will be able to save the Rohirrim, but they need to be careful now because this works, they're gonna retarget now 
and the Rohan player Jesse has to retreat. During all this time, Mora player is going for another creep at the top left side. He has a full base and even a very early industry because the amount of creeps he was able to get. And he was also able, remember, to fill up his base quite cheap because he had for the majority of the time 2 up till to 4 Lumber Mills in total. And that's gonna be even another creep and we have only 2 more creeps left on the map Forts of Eisen. One of them is gonna be secured by the Rohan player potentially. He's gonna lose this farm here to the works. This work is still chasing the Rohirrim. Rohan player is quite behind and we have a Golem entering the Rohan base just to scout the area. And Moro player has surprisingly still a decent amount of map control. And it looks like he's gonna go for a Nazgul and his money is looking quite nice as well. Look his resources, he's so close to get the Nazgul on the field. Uh, Haradrim's fighting against the Rohirrim, that's very smart from Jesse, the Rohan player. Because what you need to do, but that's also risky now. Luckily, um, if you are far away from the Haradrims, they won't be able to damage you anymore. But the outpost is gonna be secured by the Moro player and it looks like he will be even capturing another creep. So in Forts of Eisen, just for your information, there are six neutral creeps. Six uh, work layers, obviously. And uh, it looks like Moro player is gonna secure at least four with a potential chance of five. Let's see who's gonna get this one. Rohan player was able to secure that. And also one part of the treasure. He doesn't want to risk the biscuit because the Haradrims are dealing incredible amount of damage when they're on the Titter. Okay, so we have a Nazgul on his way that early into the game. And I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the game. That's the hardest matchup for the Moro faction. Because Rohan, if you didn't know, is the perfect counter to both Isengard but also Mordor on this map. Rohan is a great early game with those peasants you can recruit from the farms inside but also outside of your base. Rohan has a really strong mid game because of the cheap stables, cheap Rohirrim and also incredible amount of power in the lead game because of the leadership from Theodin but also Aragorn and then the horse archers which are like mobile uh, rangers who are dealing incredible amount of damages to the Nazgûls, Witch King and even Trolls or Muma kills. And you know, not to mention is the fact that Eowyn, who is the cheapest counter to the Nazgûls or to the Witch King, is also very, very effective. But the Nazgûl should be now able to buy a lot of time to the Moro player. Rohan has luckily still a decent amount of map control. He has a lot of farms outside, but I think it's a just a matter of time. And uh, with the help of the Nazgûl, but also more orc, more orcs coming out of the orc pit, the Moro player should be able to recontrol the map once again. It looks like he was cancelling the Eowyn. Uh, let me check his resources. Yeah, he's definitely going for Legolas now. I think that's okay. Because Legolas, in many, many situations, is gonna be more dangerous for the Moro player than uh, Eowyn. Because Eowyn, yeah, she can use the Smite ability. That's gonna deal a decent amount of damage to the Nazgul. But the Smite ability has a long cooldown, and unlike, um, unlike Legolas, uh, Eowyn can't shoot. So, you know, Nazgul can ignore the smite ability and then just keep going all the time. He has zero artillery units, he has zero Rohir marches, and that's, what, that's why he will need this Legolas really badly. It looks like the Nazgul is gonna commit to the fortress, to the Citadel anyway. This Citadel is gonna be taken down next. But the Nazgul has to be very careful. Losing the Nazgul now can change the game. Hoax Drago, that was really close. But now the Nazgul is quite slow and Legolas is gonna... It's gonna be a big problem for the Moro player. Because now Rohan is going for a for an attack, and let me tell you that much. He was purchasing the horseman shield upgrade from the stable level 2 already. And with the help of the Theodin, uh, with 50% damage and armor leadership, this Rohirrim, they won't take any damage from the towers anymore. And uh, unlike um Isengard base with you know furnaces, the slaughterhouse base from a Moro faction is much more vulnerable to base rushes. Because the slaughterhouses, they have like 1500 health only with level 1, while a furnace will have uh, 3000 health with level 1. He's going for the second Nazgul now, but I think he's gonna lose the majority of his base. He has to make sure to demolish those towers just in time. Legolas is still on the field, the Nazgul has to be very careful. And we have a lot of orcs who are fighting for the map control. And yeah, look at that. I mean, orcs are pressuring the farms quite nicely. 
And Rohan player has to be careful to not lose the entire map during the attempt trying to deal decent amount of damage to the Mordor's main base. Nazgul is quite slow, has to be very careful. There is uh, Legolas when we need him. Legolas is here. His hoax strike ability is on cooldown. We have now the second Nazgul entering the battlefield, and also Rohan player has a decent amount of resources. Oh, he was going for a base rush. And uh, Rohirrim, he has to be very careful. Oh, that might be close. He might lose him. It looks like he should be able to get away. Now the reinforcements are coming in clutch. And Theodem was also able to get rank 2. The Citadel. Oh, that's gonna be close. Oh, the, they are retargeting the Rohirrim now. And that's very, very unlucky. This Nazgul should be finishing the Zita. But he's going for the Rohirrim instead. And yeah, he's forcing his opening now to make battle towers, which obviously is very, very expensive, because 800 each. Elvin Elias will be summoned, Hoagstrike is coming in clutch, but the Nazgul will be barely able to get away. And it looks like the transition not being made just yet into the Troll Cage, but also into the Siege Works. And I'm assuming the Mordor player is gonna try to get Witch King on the field. With the help of the Industry, which should be available in the next 30 seconds, he should be able to get the money he needs. And remember, he has also two Nazgûls on the field that should be enough to buy him the time he needs. And I think Rohan will definitely need Elvin, and yeah, she is already on her way. We have one outpost, he's also gonna capture the second outpost at the bottom left side with the Lumber Mill worker. He has a lot of these Lumber Mills under his control, and he's also really, really close for the Darkness ability. The, the Nazgul has to be very careful in this situation. The Elves, they should be gone soon. No, they have actually still some time. But again, the, the Nazguls, they need to be very careful because the combination of Elvins, Smite, and Legolas Hoogstrike should be almost one-shotting them. Especially when Legolas is gonna get some levels. Okay, they are committing on Legolas. One Nazgul is down. Does he have heal? He was healing, but the heal lag. I would say he can take it because he was able to kill both the Nazguls. For a change of Legolas, if he would have healed a little bit earlier, he could, you know, he could even save Legolas and kill the two Nazguls, and that would be a win-win situation. But <clears throat> that's absolutely fine. Now Rohan has to make sure to fight for the map control to, you know, destroy those Lumber Mills as soon as possible. Eowyn is level three after killing a Nazgul. We have two power points almost collected for the Rohan player Jesse after Elvin allies draft and heal. He has still a decent amount of resources. He's going for the Archer range now, for the Fighter upgrade, uh, for the Rohirrim Archers later on. He can also make normal Archers and Elves, but I'm assuming that's not going to be the case, because as Rohan against Mordor, you want to have the mobility with the Rohirrim Archers. Okay, on the other side, we have Darkness, but there is no point of using it now, because he has nothing to buff. He's going to finally go for the Troll Cage. The Witch King is on his way, and Witch King, unlike a Nazgul, is much more resistant against Hawk Strike, for example, from Legolas. So he should be having the tankiness he needs to survive the burst. Um, and also keeping the Witch King alive is very important for the Mordor faction. Because not only a Witch King costs 8000 resources, no. But also the, uh, the leadership you are getting from the Witch King in a large area with 50% damage and armor is going to be crucial to have it on your side. Eye of Sauron is going to be used to kill the farms a little bit faster. He has this outpost, he's gonna build another orc pit, which is gonna be needed, because he will need some more orcs to fight for the map control. Map control means everything in battle for Middle Earth 1, by the way, especially for the evil factions. Witch King has to be careful, that's the chunk of Eowyn, with the smite ability. He has those Haradrims on top of the Citadel, they're also getting leadership from the Witch King, by the way, and he can also use Darkness and even Eye on them to make them much, much stronger. But it looks like you wanna give up this outpost here for free. Okay, so they are quite, pretty much exchanging the sides, and I think that's in favor of the Mordor player, because he's happy if he can hold like 3-4 mils under his control for the majority of the game, because that's more than enough for the Mordor faction. Remember, the, the revive of these Nazgûls does cost you nothing, so it costs literally zero. They're gonna need obviously more time to rejoin the battlefield, yes, but you don't lose any money from that. So he's gonna eventually have now three flying beasts on the field and that's gonna be very very hard for the Rohan player to deal for now. But he was able to purchase the fighter upgrade already, demolishing the archer range and going now for the armory next. 
Legolas is level 3. He has obviously now much more DPS. And you should never underestimate the power of the Alvin Prince. Um, he's gonna hit like an absolute truck. The Witch King is fighting for the map control, trying to get some more power points by killing those farms. Because now, I think it's gonna be very important to see who's gonna get the Nazgul, um, who's gonna get the Balrog or the Army of the Dead unlocked first. Okay, um, the Nazguls, they will need, they will still need around a minute until they are back on the field. During all this time, the model player is slowly building up his army. He has now mountain trolls on their way. Um, he's gonna wait for the level 2 for the drama troll. He can also go for the combos if he wants to. He has the money he needs. He can also go for the siege works, make some catapults. He can afford it right now. Darkness is available. Darkness, um, you know, Darkness, Witch King Eye. And then the drama trolls is gonna make those trolls almost invincible. They are gonna be very, very strong. Eodin is almost rank 3. Rank 4 is gonna be needed for the glorious charge. He's gonna purchase the uh, heavy armor first, the banner carrier second, and then potentially also the forge blades for the normal Rohirrim third. He's also getting now some Rohirrim archers on the field, and that's gonna force the Moro player to play much more defensively. I think in this, in the, you know, at this stage of the game, it would be much more um, impactful if the Moro player is gonna use one or you know, even if you know even two of his Nazguls to fight constantly for the map control. Because Rohan right now has to stay grouped with his army. He can't split his army. And if you engage with Nazguls like that, I think it's a mistake. He was able to save the outpost, but he was losing one Nazgul for that. And I think that's not worth it. Because we have seen already before how much time you need until you are able to revive a Nazgul. Okay, um, yeah, he was able to purchase heavy armor and the Banakiri upgrades now. Going, like mentioned before, for Forge Blades last. And Rohan is getting stronger and stronger, and I think the time, the real time to shine is gonna be when Theorin is level 4 with the Glorious Charge. And when um, Legolas hits level 4 with the Train Archers ability, he can use that on the Rohirrim Archers and level them up and make them much, much stronger. Remember, level advantage in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is actually much more impactful than in Battle for Middle Earth 2 or Rise of the Witch King. Okay, Moro player has still a decent amount of resource income. He has around 4,000 resources collected. He can definitely afford even a second troll cage or Muma kill pen or siege works or combos. He's also building a fire upgrades and the banner carry upgrades now. He has three battalions of combos on the field, four trolls and only one drama troll. I would like to see a second drama troll. The reason is simple because drama troll's leadership is gonna be crucial, like mentioned before. And if you have two of them, uh, you know, they're gonna make each other also stronger and especially the tankiness is gonna be very, very important. Legolas is getting committed on. He's using Nazgul. He's, he was using heal for Legolas. The Nazgul has to be careful, the Witch King has to be careful, the trolls are engaging, but the drama troll is far, far away. Elven allies will be summoned here from the Rohan player. Another Nazgul has been taken down. He has now both the Nazgul's dead. He needs to revive the second one. The Witch King is very, very important and you need to keep him alive. Um, the Drama Troll has to come closer. He's now, right now, doesn't give any leadership to the combos, but also not to the trolls. But you can still see them glowing like crazy with the amount of leadership they have right now. He's gonna be able to break one part of the wall. I would even go for a second wall break. Because this tiny pathways, they can be risky. Imagine if you are entering the base like that. And Hulk Strike from Legolas is being able to hit all your units at once. And Legolas is dealing crazy amount of damage. Trust me on that one. Okay. Moro player is getting more and more power points collected. He should never ever... He should never ever separate his combos from his trolls. And never ever separate the drama troll from the trolls either. That's a really, really risky move. Does the Rohan player have Elvin Wood? No, he doesn't have Elvin Wood, but he's gonna pick Elvin Wood. We can read him like a book, he's going for a trample play. Trample is incoming. Eodin has to be very careful. Oh, the Witch King was not paying attention, and all the combos are gonna be now without enough leadership. The Drama Troll is for some reason always miles, miles away from the, you know, from the main army. During all this time, Moro player was able to refight for the map control. He has to, you know, keep making units. I think he has still a decent amount of money. Yes, he does. 
He has around 6,000 resources still. Some combos are still on the field. Legolas, uh, I mean, uh, Eowyn is almost level 6. Eowyn is almost level 4. Look at that. Glorious Charge is going to be unlocked and Glorious Charge is going to make those Rohirrim shine bright like a diamond. We know that. Drama Troll is trying to make it to the trolls to make them stronger. Now Tildin is level 4. The Glorious Charge will be unlocked and immediately used. Legolas is shooting down those trolls as well. Only the stable is remaining, but even if he loses that, Rohan wouldn't be defeated just yet. He has still, you know, a lot of money to rebuild the base, and remember, he has an outpost that will be enough to keep him alive. But the stable rank 3 is actually quite healthy, and without the leadership, the trolls are just not strong enough to burst it down. Rohan's stable with level 3 has 6000 health, so one of the most tankiest buildings in the game. 6 power points collected now for the Rohan player. He can go for the ends, but I would definitely not go for it because let's be honest ends against the Moro faction are just not very useful because the flying heroes like Nazgûl but also Witch King can just destroy them but also trolls with enough leadership can pretty much two shot uh, ends battalion I would say the best choice here for the Rohan player would be to go for the for the cloud break from the spellbook okay Legolas can also use the train archers ability again like mentioned before you know if they are look at that they're leveling up quite fast and they will be much, much stronger, you know, once they are level 5 or higher, especially when they are level 10. One battalion can actually burst down a Nazgul from 100 to 0 within 2 seconds. Okay, uh, Moro player is now in a really bad situation. I think that was the attack which could literally win him the game. But the miscoordination of the army he had, the, you know, the fact that he was separating his combos for some reason from his trolls. And hoping that the trolls all alone is going to be enough to burst down the base. But I think... Shouldn't, he shouldn't be scared of taking the big fight because everything was in, in his favor. Yet the drama troll, who should be always close to the trolls, Witch King should be alive. And the combos, especially inside the base. Remember, in the base, the Rohan player wouldn't be able to use the Elven Wood. So Elven Wood was kind of crushing half of the army from the Moro player. And that would not be the case if you are entering the base. So you are in the, in the base with trolls protecting your combos. For the, for, the, for the chance of the Rohan player going for a trample. And the combos who can't get trampled down because of the help of the trolls, and even if they get trampled down with the amount of leadership they have, they wouldn't die. Trust me on that one. And yeah. Now the game is turning around in the favor of the Rohan player. He has also Cloud Break ready now. One of the Nazgul's is back on the field. He's, he needs to wait for the Witch King. Witch King is now back on the field as well. Everything is available for the Rohan player for the for the next big fight. Glorious Charge is on cooldown because he was using it right there. He has a lot of catapults now on the field as well. The trolls, they need to be protecting those catapults but also the combos. There is no reason of charging forwards with the trolls because the Rohir marches, they're gonna be much, much faster. So you won't be able to catch them, you know, as long as they run away. And remember, the Cloud Break is gonna also slow down every unit from the model player. So the trolls are gonna move like in slow motion. And also they're gonna lose a lot of armor, that means killing them is gonna be much, much easier for the Rohan player, Jesse. Okay, and also the Witch King has to be very careful. I think in this situation the Rohan player can wait, but the Darkness is still on cooldown. The Darkness is not available for the next big fight. Darkness is a very, very strong and important leadership we don't want to miss. And very important it's gonna be to keep those drama trolls with the combos. Remember, in Battle for Middle Earth 1, the drama trolls are also giving leadership even to the catapults. He was just shooting at his own Witch King. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what's gonna happen. The, the, the Rohirrim archers are very vulnerable. They're like glass cannon units. They are all about ditching out damage, but they can't handle damage in return. So especially catapults, and remember the Rohirrim archers are very vulnerable against fire. And if the catapults are gonna land a great shot on them, they're gonna lose. He's gonna lose every one of them. You know, maybe the glorious charge is gonna be able to save. He has also Aragorn now on the field. Fully commitment. The Nazgûls, they need to do something. But Witch King has to be with the army. That's a really risky move. Elvin Wood will be used for a trample. The Hinted Land will be immediately used for the cover. But the combos are almost gone anyway. The Nazgûls are dying within a second and a half. One of them is already gone. The Eowyn is looking for a smite ability, smite will be used, Eowyn is screaming once again. I am no man, but the Nazgul is dying immediately as well. Rohan is retreating, but the main army 
The main focus was to kill the Nazguls, was to kill the Convos, and he was successfully able to do that without losing any of his heroes. Aragorn is level 5, he has Atelas and Blademaster for the worst case scenario. Legolas is almost level 6, level 7 will be unlocking the Eowyn, and Eowyn is even level 10. Like, Eowyn is the MVP for sure in this matchup, killing so many Nazgûls and so many Witch Kings. You know, I, I think, I don't want I don't want to be too rude, but I think the model player was definitely making a mistake there. Um, always keep the trolls around your combos, and if the Rohan player is going for a trample, use them to knock them down. And I don't know what you're doing with your, uh, with your Nazgûls, but there is no reason of engaging with the Nazgûls at this stage of the game. Use them for the map control, because look at that. Mortal player now has only one and two slaughterhouses on the field. And he will eventually, even though it looks great right now resource-wise, but he will eventually run out of money. He is seven power points away from getting um, the army of the dead unlocked. And the Rohan player needs only five. I mean, for the Balrog to be unlocked, sorry. And the Rohan player needs only five more power points for that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Aragorn's leadership is gonna be very important as well. Look at the Rohirrim Arches, they are now highly leveled. We have a level 5 battalion here, a level almost 7 battalion here. He has both the outposts under his control. He has like 80% of the map control. Incredible amount of resource income. He's gonna be very, very rich pretty soon. Because he was able to keep pretty much all his units alive. And that's gonna be the last attempt of Rohan's, uh, of Rohan's attack, I'm assuming. And of the defense of the model player. He's gonna use the darkness, but that is just not enough. He has no drama trolls around, and darkness leadership all alone is not gonna be enough. And everything is getting taken down. The base is now wide open, and he has no Nazguls, no Witch King on the field, no catapults, no trolls to protect the base either. And two power points away from the from the army of the dead for the Rohan player Jesse. Everything is falling apart. What a great game, which is gonna be over now. Congratulations to Jesse with an incredible patience and performance in this game. He was so behind. Remember, the first Nazgul was on the field before Rohan had anything. Most of the players would have, you know, said GG and give up the game. But he didn't do that. He was fighting until the very end and well deserved the victory in this really, really great match on the map for Sofizen. Guys, if you enjoyed that one, please don't forget, forget to leave a like on this video. I see you next time. Take care of yourselves and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.